Okay, moment of truth. OMG, what is this? Hello. Send help. Why isn't it working? Meryl, you're being such a good girl. Maybe I have to do something in the app. Manage users. Ugh. God damn it. This was supposed to be so easy that I could just use this to see how much Meryl weighs. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam Light, and today I am reviewing the Garmin S2 Smart Scale. I didn't think that I'd ever review a scale. You know, I am pretty inherently against scales, and yet they are so buzzy. And I was looking at them, and I was like, holy sh**. If we can really get a smart scale that can tell me my percent body fat super accurately where I could do it every single day, that could be really cool. It, for some people, may even be helpful, right? In the right circumstances. I want to figure out, one, if this is accurate, two, if it's worth it, and three, do we really need it, right? Because if you don't know me, uh, I'm a big proponent of not having to spend a shit ton of money on fitness gear and supplements and all that stuff, right? Being healthy shouldn't be super expensive. Uh, so I'm hoping to kind of clear the air and figure out exactly what we should be spending our money on in the fitness industry. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so I really did plan on finishing this video tonight, but this little monster, she pooped everywhere. How dare now you? I need to go clean it up. So, you have betrayed uh, I'll me. finish it tomorrow. But she's so cute, right? I mean, even though she pooped everywhere. Mm. Stop embarrassing right, me, you know, Dad. The scale can wait. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> okay, it's a new day. We are back and we are ready to talk about our Garmin Smart Scale. Firstly, before we get started, I just want to talk about what the Smart Scale does, what it tracks exactly. Number one, obviously it tracks your weight, right? We'll see if it tracks super accurately or if we feel like that is pretty skewed. Number two, and I think this is a really cool feature, is that it tracks your weight trend for you. So from weigh-in to weigh-in, uh, you can see if you lost weight or gained weight. This one has a little caveat for me. I think it's interesting, but I also think that it can lead to some disordered eating or obsessive behavior about weighing yourself. So I think it's as cool as it is, I think it can also be pretty detrimental to our health as well. Third, the Garmin tracks your BMI, which a lot of people would say uh, is an outdated measurement that is not necessarily accurate for our population today, but it's still interesting that they track that. Probably the most interesting and the, the measurement that I was most interested in this scale for was percent body fat. And this one's interesting because I think that percent body fat, when used appropriately, can be one way to track your progress. Whereas uh, when you start a new fitness program or you start eating differently, your weight may still fluctuate in a weird way, a way that doesn't necessarily say, okay, well, I'm exercising, the weight is going down in a direct correlation, right? Um, percent body fat should be that direct correlation, right? If you are exercising, and if you're eating well, your percent body fat should go down whereas sometimes your weight will maintain for a bit, sometimes it's a water weight problem, all, all these different factors, right? So percent body fat, in theory, should be an amazing thing for us to track when on our fitness journey. I'm a little skeptical that this machine that is only $150 is able to accurately measure my percent body fat. Basically how it works is when you step on the scale, it sends an electrical current up your body. And depending upon how much interference that electrical current gets uh, from running into muscle tissue versus just water, right? That is how it determines your percent body fat. Again, in theory, this is great. Is it super accurate? We'll have to find out. I will say at the doctor's office or uh, at some gyms, there are machines that can give you a very accurate number for this. You can use something called an in-body machine, but these machines are thousands of dollars. Uh, if this $150 skill can accurately do percent body fat, that would be pretty wild, for sure. Last thing I'll say, just so that we don't get hung up on the percent body fat thing, we love to make general recommendations about how much percent body fat we should be at. Uh, but we also have to remember that not all body fat is created equal. If we have body fat around our abdomen, that is considered more high risk body fat because it puts you at higher risk for chronic disease and, and, and different problems with your heart. So as much as you will hear people making recommendations on percent body fat and as important as it could be to track, it's not the be all end all. Three more, it does your skeletal muscle mass. So that'll give you a number in pounds or kilograms of how much your muscle mass weighs. 
So that can be interesting over time. Again, if it's accurate seeing uh, your muscle mass increase, hopefully. Then they do your skeletal bone mass, which obviously shouldn't really change after you finished growing. That one's like, eh, I don't know why we really need it. And then lastly, they do your body water percentage, which is, I would never use that number to say like, oh, I'm dehydrated, right? Oh, I'm at 61% today, I need to drink more water. That would not be how I would use this. I don't really know how I would use it, but it is a feature of the scale that I'm sure that they were like, well, we can like pretty much calculate this with a fancy math equation. So let's put it in there, right? So it's fine. I could leave those last two, maybe those last three. But let's jump into, is this scale accurate? Because none of these matter if it's not accurate, right? So let's do it. Now, when I decided to review this Garmin Index Smart Scale, it's a mouthful, uh, I did a lot of research on what is the best scale on the market and what is one that I should be reviewing, right? And across the board, people basically have agreed that the Garmin scale is as accurate as any of the other consumer scales on the market. It's actually at the higher price end. You can get um, some of these smart scales for like 40 bucks and they tend to be just as accurate as the Garmin. The Cardio 2 smart scale, the Withing smart scale, they're both less expensive than the Garmin and the reviews have shown that they are just as accurate. So something to keep in mind. But I've done my own research with the Garmin and I wanna show you the results after tracking for a week. Okay, so here are my results from six days of measuring my weight with the Garmin Smart Scale. Let's look at Monday, I weighed myself twice and the thing that I'll say about this, you can see the times that I weighed myself and ultimately to be the most accurate, I should have weighed myself at the same time every day. But I was also just interested in if I didn't do that, how much things would shift and how accurate things would be. So if we look at Monday, we have 850, my weight was 159.8. I had a BMI of 21.6, body fat 14.2. This is your skeletal muscle mass, bone mass, and body water. I weighed myself again at 430 and things were pretty similar. Uh, my weight was similar. I would say that is like well within, one pound is about within uh, that margin of error. Uh, my BMI was similar, my body fat is 0.7 different, and this is what gives me the most pause, right? We want to be able to use body fat to say like, oh, I went down a tenth of a percent today because I did a really hard workout these past three days and I've been eating well, right? And if it fluctuates 0.7%, that's a really hard number for us to use, especially because it's already a pretty small number. Your body fat percentage is never gonna go below a certain number, right? So we only have like maybe like six percentage points for us to work within. And if we can't get accurate enough to the 10th of a percentage point, it's not gonna be a good indicator of if you are making progress, right? So that was a little discouraging to see that the body fat percentage was not super accurate. Um, your bone mass, my bone mass shouldn't have changed uh, and my body water changed a little bit. So that's Monday. Tuesday, weight stayed pretty consistent. Uh, BMI stayed consistent. Body fat stayed consistent from my second weigh in. Um, consistent here, consistent here, consistent here. So that looks pretty good. Wednesday, weight stayed similar. BMI stayed the same. Body fat stayed the same. Skeletal muscle mass stayed the same bone mass, body water. This is a good sign, right? Because I didn't do anything overtly strenuous in these three days or that really would call for there being big differences in these numbers. I was mostly just seeing if it would be accurate from weigh in to weigh in, right? Thursday, my weight stayed the same. BMI changed slightly. Body fat percentage went up by two tenths. Not a big deal. I'd say that is within that margin of error, um, like two to three tenths. Skeletal muscle mass changed not virtually nothing. Bone mass virtually didn't change. But let's get into Friday and Saturday. Again, I didn't eat differently. I didn't work out differently on any of these days. My weight went down three pounds. That's decently normal. That could absolutely happen. It could be because I weighed myself later on in the day. My body fat percentage went down to 12.1. And this just isn't realistic, right? There's no way that I dropped almost or about a percentage and a half on body fat in one day. And this was kind of 
my least favorite part of the test was seeing this percent body fat discrepancy because it means that we could be having a really shitty time of it and we weigh ourselves and we're super excited because it looks like we went down over a percentage point in our body fat percent and then the next day it's right back up to where it was right as you can see on saturday i was right back up to that 13.8 range and i don't know why friday was so off but it was and i see that as being a huge detriment to the scale so those are my numbers now let's get into whether or not you need this because i'm a huge proponent of health and fitness not being a huge financial burden on yourself we don't need a ton of stuff to be healthy so do you need this smart scale okay so here's the big question do you need this and i'm gonna say i'm slightly biased about scales in general i love love fitness and tech gadgets right but i don't really think that anyone in the general population who's not training for a bodybuilding competition or is a professional athlete or uh, is on a more strict regimen per their doctor prescription, really needs a scale. I think that we have so many different performance indicators and feel good goals and emotional goals that we shouldn't need a number on a scale to obsess about in order to tell us that we are doing a good job on our health journey, right? We should be able to say, no, I wanna get a six minute mile or I wanna be able to back squat my body weight or uh, I want to get eight hours of sleep. I want to not feel like I'm dying at 3 p.m. every single day, right? We have all of these performance and feel good goals that we could be focusing on and yet we want the easy one. We want the one where we can look at the number on our scale and it will tell us if we are achieving our goal. Sometimes it's just not that easy. I love that the Garmin is Wi-Fi capable. It automatically syncs to my health kit. It automatically syncs to my Garmin watch. These are all amazing things, right? And if you have the self-control to be able to use this skill wisely, I would say that it can be a useful addition to your tech and fitness gear. So I'd give it, you know, like two biceps out of five, right? Because I do think that the accuracy is a little iffy, but it's also pretty amazing that you can get a smart scale for about $150, sometimes even less, uh, and it's gonna give you some decently accurate readings. I just wanna be clear one last time, being healthy does not need to be expensive. You do not need this scale, but if you are into fitness and tech gear like I am and you can use the scale wisely, maybe it could be a fun addition to your home. Thank you so much for watching my review of the Garmin Index S2 Smart Scale. Wow, what a mouth, mouthful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, and check out my online fitness program at www.pridefit.com. I will see you next time.